Today I wanted to share with you some of my favorite apps I use as a family nurse practitioner in my primary care office. So I work in a family medicine clinic, so this is very like primary care, all ages, preventative health, all of that good stuff. If you work in a specialty area, these won't all apply to you, but if you are just, if you're in NP school or PA school, whatever it is, and your focus right now is primary care, these should be pretty helpful for you. Welcome, I'm Liz. Like I said, I'm a family nurse practitioner and I work in primary care. I don't know how people survived working without their phones before all these apps came out, but they're a lifesaver and I thought I would share some of my favorite ones with you today. Also, don't mind Holly, I tried moving her and she was just not into it. <laughs> She's like, no, I'm napping, go away. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess you rule my life. And as we're going through these, I'll try to remember how much they cost, if they cost anything. Almost all of them were free. Some of them had a little bit of a fee and hopefully I can remember what that is. If not, you might have to go look it up. All right, so the very first one is free. It's Hippocrates. You guys probably already have this on your phone. The free version is a phenomenal guide for just your regular medications. When you open it up, you can see the doses. You can look under, you know, what is this commonly approved for? What are the contraindications? Some things I should be monitoring monitoring. It, it, it has some other algorithms and everything in there too. I don't use it as much for that because like I said, I don't have the paid version. And a lot of that I think is more in that area. And I want to say it's like 180 ish dollars if you get the whole subscription and that has guidelines for you. I just use the free one. It's been so, so helpful. I look it up all the time for doses. If I want to know like, oh, I'm starting you on lisinopril, what's a good dose to start out? And it'll tell you the titration information about how to kind of work up to higher doses. And whenever I run into patients who are on any medicine I'm not totally familiar with, or I wanna see how they interact, it has an interaction tracker. And I always look that up, contraindications, like I said, and things for monitoring. So that one is a phenomenal app. I think all nurse practice, all healthcare providers, nurses, everyone should use this. I used it all the time as a nurse to double check my patient's med. This one is a good one. The next one I use all the time is called Family Practice Notebook. If you look in your app store, it's gonna be FP Notebook. This is kind of like the light version of Up To Date. It is $20 a year and it has a lot of really helpful algorithms. It has differential diagnoses. If someone comes in and they're like, oh, my throat hurts, it can kind of tell you the guy, you know, what are you kind of thinking about here? Or abdominal pain, how are we trying to triage that? It's been really helpful in managing things that I'm not 100% sure on, or at least gives me a direction to go in when I'm kind of stumped. Now, I do not have up to date because it is expensive and my employer doesn't pay for it. A lot of people have up to date. Up to date would pretty much be a replacement for this one. You would not need both if you do have up to date access, which I know a lot of people do through their employer. But if you do not have up to date, then this is a really, really great alternative. Side note, if you are a student or you work in a large health system, you can probably get up to date for free based on where you work or through your employer. So I would definitely check that out. You usually just have to log into the computer every three months. I actually had access to it when I was in school through my employer as a nurse. I just had to log in every three months. Obviously I lost that since I don't, want, I don't work there anymore. But if you have access to up to date guys, what are you doing? Make sure you hop on that. The next app, I truthfully don't even remember what it's called, but when you look it up, it's A-H-R-Q-E-P-S-S. -S. I don't know why they call it that. It's the USPSTF guidelines for primary care. So those are the preventative guidelines. When people are coming in for their well visits, these are the things you're recommending, like colorectal screening, mammograms, who you're screening for hep C. It's so convenient to use. You type in the patient's name, you type in the patient's age, male or female. I think it asks you a few other questions about their demographic and it plops up all of the recommendations. I usually just look at the A and B recommendations because that's what we commonly use in practice. But this is a great tool, especially if you're just starting out in school or in practice and you just need to remember like, oh, do we do DEXAs at 65? Or like, is that before then? And you just can't remember. This has been a super duper helpful tool. I use it all the time before I go into physicals just to double check that I have all of their screening recommendations right there for me and I'm not gonna forget anything since that's literally your job as a primary care provider is to be in charge of the recommendations. Okay, the next one is called MD Calc. And this is helpful if you have patients coming in with acute 
complaints most of the time. I think it's very commonly used in emergency departments and urgent cares to decide kind of what to do with people. But if you need to decide like, does this person have pneumonia? Like, should I admit them to the hospital? Do I need to be calling an ambulance for them? Or, oh, you hurt your ankle. What are the Ottawa ankle rules to know if I should image this or how I should treat it? This app also has a lot of those really helpful ad algorithms for like, oh, you want to calculate the Chad Vask score or whatever to see if your patient with a fib or anything needs to be on a anticoagulant. This has all of that in there and you just type in the patient's information and their age without having to like remember what the algorithm is or go to a different website. It's just all right there for you. So this is really helpful. I use this a lot, like I said, in acute situations or where I'm getting a patient who has had a recent diagnosis of something where I'm trying to rule in like how much should we manage this or but if you work in urgent care or inpatient or in an emergency room you're going to be using this all the time and this one was free i think the next app is the cdc vaccination schedules obviously in primary care we see a lot of kids we see adults you know everyone across the lifespan is getting vaccines. So it's helpful to know, you know, oh yeah, when do we start recommending the HPV vaccine or when are you eligible for the shingles vaccine? This has all of that in there. You can go through, look it up super fast. It also has the catch up schedules for kids in case you need those. It has some vaccine information. It has helpful information in case you have patients coming in, you know, if they have COPD, these are the vaccinations they need to make sure they have if they have diabetes. This is what you should recommend your patients get. And it also has the contraindications so you can look through and if someone comes in, you know, and they have some kind of allergy and you're worried like, ooh, is that okay? Or they're immunocompromised, what should I do here? It has all that information, so it's really easy to access. Now for my pediatric population, one of my favorite apps that I use all the time is called PD Quick Calc. I wanna say this was a couple dollars, but it's been so worth it. So this app is super duper helpful to help when you have to figure out, you know, oh, this, how much does amoxicillin is this kid gonna get? Because obviously we dose everything in pediatrics based on weight, but then you don't know how much does, how much amoxicillin comes in each ML and how many do they even get per kilogram. So all you really need to know is the dose you want to give per kilo, which it does have recommendations, but I would again use an app like Hippocrates or look it up in whatever guide you have to know, oh, for an ear infection, we're going to dose it at this versus this. Once you have the child's weight, you enter that into the app, you then enter the drug and you go in and you can say how many milligrams per kilogram you hit calculate and you can tell it how often you even wanna give it, you know, twice a day, three times a day, and it'll tell you how much to give and how to order it. And it'll tell you the concentration that it comes in, which is really helpful when you go to order it because you never have any idea and the computer always wants you to tell it what the concentration is and you're like, I don't know what concentration that is. I don't know what concent, I'm not a pharmacist. I don't know what the concentration is. So this app has all of that. So if you are seeing a lot of kids, highly recommend this one. It was actually recommended to me by my daughter's pediatrician when she found out I was in MP school. She's like, oh my gosh, you have to get this app. <laughs> it's been very helpful. Thanks, Dr. Long. Okay, now moving on from kids to women. If you do a lot of women's health and you're doing pap smears, it's a $10 app, but it's so worth it. It's called ASCCP. And this is the updated screening guidelines and management for all your pap smears. So in case you need a refresher on how often someone who is 27 is gonna get a pap, and do you need to order this with HPV co-testing or no, or you have a 50 year old who like, 20 years ago had an abnormal pap, but everything ended up okay. What do you need to do? Had a hysterectomy, what do I do now? All of those questions that you're sometimes like, mm, I'm not really sure. This app has guidelines for you. And then if something comes back a little bit funky, it also tells you what to do, which is very reassuring because let me tell you, the first time you have a pap that comes back and it has a little red flag and it says abnormal and it tells you what it is and you're like, I don't know how panicked I am. I've been their friend. This will give you a lot of peace of mind. It just walks you right through it so you can know, hey, are we just gonna repeat this? Are we sending you straight to OBGYN like tomorrow? How worried are we? This app, well worth the $10. It, next on the list is the CDC STD Treatment Guide. This is a free one and it's a great resource. It has all the different treatments for all the different sexually transmitted infections that you could imagine. It also has guidelines for who to screen, how often to screen. It also has information on things that aren't STIs but are just kind of like clumped into that general 
grouping like bacterial vaginosis, yeast infections, all of those. It includes what tests you should do if you think you're encountering any of these illnesses. Also what the treatment should be, what the follow-up should be. Very, very handy having all that information in one place. And the CDC is kind of who we get our most up-to-date information on for the management of this. So there's an app for that. If you read a lot of x-rays in your practice, this one might be helpful for you. Obviously, radiologists are going to read all of your imaging, but sometimes it's helpful if you have access to immediate, like if you're in urgent care and you have, or even your office has the ability to x-ray and you wanna just get a general idea of kind of like what this says before someone officially reads it, Sublux is a really good app. And even as an educational tool, whether you're in nursing school or you're a nurse or you're in NP school, it goes through how to read an x-ray. First look at this, then look at this. And it can kind of give you an idea of what you're looking for. So like when I recently broke my toe, I couldn't really tell just by looking at it what exactly I was looking through. So I flipped through the app of the foot and sure enough, yeah, I was able to identify it after that. So if you're doing a lot of x-rays, this is a cool one to have. Or if you're just curious, I'm just no, I don't read a lot of my own usually because the radiologist gets to it before I do. It's just kind of fascinating. The next app is called Formulary. This is really good for knowing what is going to be covered under what insurance. So say your patient comes in and they have Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. And I want to know, hey, when I prescribe you this inhaler, is it going to be covered or are you going to be like, no, because what's worse than your patient getting to the pharmacy and then them being like, this isn't covered under your insurance. Now we can look and see, oh, look, this isn't covered, but you can have it do alternative, like what else would it prefer? And it'll tell you it would prefer this. It's a little bit, it's not like the smoothest app. It's kind of like rough, but it has the information. And if you give it a little bit of like time and love and you, you two learn how to work well together and it saved my patients a lot of frustration because then you're not prescribing something that they get to the pharmacy and then they're like, this isn't covered. This is very, very helpful for all of your Medicare patients mostly because, because Medicare changes their formulary and what they're going to pay for literally all the time. So this has saved a huge headache on that part. So really anyone who's prescribing anything, this is a super good one. Next is Medscape. This is a good app. I don't use it quite as much as maybe I should. If you, Again, if you have up to date, this one's kind of redundant, but it does have some guidelines. It has treatment, assessment, differential diagnosis, a lot of that same stuff. It is free. Um, it has information on procedures and all of that too, if you do those. It does have guidelines. It has an interaction tracker, it looks like, articles on it. So if you just need another general resource, this is something that I usually use if I've looked in the F Family Practice Notebook and that didn't really have it, then I'll hop over here and check this and I've had some good information on it. Going back to our women's health discussion, probably should have included this there, but it's fine. The CDC also has a contraception app. It is the USMEC USSPR and this gives you the guide guidelines for not necessarily exactly what birth control to prescribe, but if you have a patient who's coming in and they're 35 and they're a smoker, it'll tell you the risk of putting them on hormonal contraception versus an IUD. It'll go down the line and say like, these are your risks, which is that USMEC report when you see that. The MEC is stages like the risks outweigh the benefits of this or vice versa. And it just kind of gives you a guidance on maybe the type of birth control that you could be prescribing for your patients. This app also has things where you can go in and if you have different health conditions, you can go in and you can tell the app they have this and it'll tell you these birth controls might be better options versus these other ones. It's pretty much just a safety thing that you can run through and say, oh, cool, like my patient can have hormonal contraception or they cannot. Next is the LDLC manager by the American College of Cardiology. And this is for deciding if your patient needs to be on a statin for their cholesterol. Now there have been more recent guidelines that have come out that are very convoluted and confusing as to who needs a statin and who doesn't. So this is technically not like the cutting edge of research here because things have gotten, the last update was just incredibly convoluted and confusing. So a lot of people still use this method, which goes kind of by your age and your risk factors. And you can just type that all into the app and it'll tell you if your patient is high, low, medium risk, and what kind of statin they should be on. So like high intensity, medium, or low. I usually t look at this and then kind of look at the new guidelines and come have a conversation with the patient and kind of come up with it from there. It's a good starting point. It's not the end all be all, but it definitely gives you a good idea of like, yes, this person definitely needs it or maybe they just need lifestyle modifications. Like I said, the new update is just a disaster, honestly. So this is kind of nice to at least have to kind of understand where to at least start in terms of does your patient 
does your patient need a statin? If you see a lot of COPD patients, the gold pocket guide is really helpful. This is a 2017 version. I don't know if there's an updated one, but it has how to deal with COPD exacerbations, how to deal with chronic COPD management. And the gold guidelines are the COPD management guidelines. So you would have that at your fingertips. If your patient, you know, isn't doing well with their current management, how to step it up. Uh, or if they come in more likely in an acute exacerbation, what are you gonna do to treat them? So that one has been helpful there. And last but not least, GoodRx. So this is something I like to keep on my phone in case you see someone who's coming in and they do not have insurance or their deductible is crazy high and you wanna prescribe them a medicine. Usually this is more of like an acute medicine because long-term I try to get them on something that they're gonna be able to afford. But say they come in and they need an antibiotic and they need, don't have insurance and they wanna know how much is this gonna cost, you can type the antibiotic in or any medication and it will tell you the the cheapest place you can find it and it's kind of like a coupon code that you can then bring to the pharmacy and they you can show them the phone with the coupon and they can get it for that price so this has been like i said if you have someone who comes in and they need doxycycline and you're like dang it <laughs> you don't have insurance, this is gonna be crazy expensive. You could search and see, this is gonna be the cheapest place. I show it to them on my phone, I have it on mine so I can walk them through it, have them download the app in the office and then they bring their phone with a coupon and they can get it for hopefully a more affordable price. Or if you can have the conversation, hey, none of these are really in my price range, is there anything else we can go from? Because it's way better to have that conversation with your, with your patient when they're sitting with you of like, I can't afford this where you can figure out a different solution rather than them just leaving and not doing anything about it and getting way worse because they couldn't afford the medicine but they were too embarrassed to say. So if I have a patient who I see has no insurance, I always bring this up and I say, do you have the GoodRx app? Let's look at how much it's gonna cost and is this feasible for you? Because at the end of the day, that's what we want. Oh, bye Holly. Now you're gonna, our video's over and she's gonna leave now. <laughs> solid. All right guys, and those are pretty much all the apps that I'm using. Probably come out with a new version, you know, like every year or something because obviously things are going to change. There it's this is different from two I think a year ago or 2 years ago I made a video on the apps I used then and it's funny to see which ones have transferred over and which ones I'm like, yeah, no. If you guys have any apps that are helpful that I did not mention in this video, please leave them down below. I've learned so much from you guys. Just you guys have all the great apps too. So let me know down below what apps you guys have used that are super helpful in your practice as a nurse or an NP or whatever you are. I would love to hear about them. If this video was helpful and you want to see more like it, consider subscribing. I do content videos usually on nursing and NP things on Tuesdays and on Saturdays. I have a vlog where I document my life in and out of work as a family nurse practitioner. Also head over to Instagram where I post lots of fun polls and we talk about what I do at work and you get to see my kids and it's just a great time. You can message me. Head over there. I'd love to be friends. And if you want some other ideas of how you can get information for your practice, make sure to check out the video that I'll link at the end of this video talking about podcasts that I listen to while I'm driving that are how I stay up to date with everything I'm doing at work. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a fabulous rest of your day and I'll see you again next time. Bye.